Hey YouTube, this is We All Juggle Knives, and in this video we're going to talk about multi-tool design theory, specifically what I call the four slots problem. Now a multi-tool has four slots reserved for the longer fold-out tools, but there are five tools that people often want included. Those five tools for the longer slots would be the plain edge blade, a secondary blade usually with a serrated edge and a different uh, tip shape, the wood saw, the metal file, and the scissors. So we've got five tools and only four slots. A lot of the differences, the major differences in multi-tools on the market today boil down to how each manufacturer has resolved the four slots problem. In this video we're just going to do an overview of the different ways that manufacturers have addressed this problem. The first solution would be trying to combine two tools into one. And the most common example would be a combo edge blade. Now I do not have a multi-tool that has a combo edge blade, so uh, this Gerber knife is going to, that's going to represent the combo edge solution. I really don't favor this solution because although some would say it's the best of both worlds, I see it as the worst of both worlds. You get less plain edge to work with and less length of serrations to saw with, and even though you have a combo edge, you still only have one tip design as opposed to two. When you have two blades, you can have two different tip designs. You know, you can have one for draw cutting and one more for slicing and piercing. So giving you a single blade with a combo edge doesn't do anything to give you the two tips. The next solution is to simply leave off one of the five tools. Just decide which of those five doesn't matter as much to you and just leave it off the design. This is a common solution and a pretty easy and painless solution. Uh, for example, on this Super Tool 300, they just leave off the scissors. If you look at the scissors on a multi-tool, they're more costly and more complicated than the other tools which are just, you know, one solid piece that folds out. Whereas scissors, it's one piece, then another piece connected by a hinge, which is a possible weak point, and then a third piece, which is acting as the spring. So it makes perfect sense, actually, to leave the scissors off of this tool, because the whole selling point of this is to be simple, reliable, less expensive, and have less things to go wrong. On the other hand, a multi-tool is supposed to be a, a pocket tool chest. It's supposed to give you access to uh, every common tool. So in that sense, leaving one tool off kind of goes against the whole idea of having a complete pocket tool set. Another solution would be to shrink down one of the longer tools and make it fit in one of the shorter tool slots. The Leatherman Wave right here is one of the best examples. They took the scissors and they shrunk them down so that it'll fit in one of the shorter slots. This is definitely a valid solution. Uh, it's an understandable compromise. However, it does give you scissors that just have less reach and are just smaller and less robust. You know, shrinking down one of the tools is a double-edged sword. For example, on the sidekick here, they wanted to fit the metal file into the tool, so they shrunk it down, resulting in pretty much one of the worst files that you'll find on a Leatherman. Also, there is the issue of proportion. You know, shrinking down the scissors on the Wave, it's not so bad, but if you shrunk the scissors down on an even larger tool, such as the Surge, it would look a little ridiculous on such a large multi-tool to have tiny little scissors. The next solution, to include a tool exchanger, such as on the Leatherman Surge. The Surge allows you to exchange the wood saw for the file, or vice versa. This solution certainly gives you a lot of capability. You get all five tools in the one multi-tool. However, the tool exchanger does add complexity, it does add cost to the tool, and that's why the Leatherman Surge is one of the most expensive. And they actually had to redesign this from the original just to make it hold it in better, a little stronger. So again, complexity, more stuff to go wrong. Furthermore, the whole idea of a multi-tool 
is portability and convenience and requiring you to carry one extra bit that's separate from the tool and then potentially have to stop what you're doing and exchange that tool for the other tool. It's a little bit less convenient. It just adds a little bit less convenience to a tool whose whole selling point is convenience. And the next solution, just add more slots. This is a very rare solution. In fact, I've only seen it executed in one tool, this largest size uh, juice model. The juice actually has six longer slots. Now, the number six position, they put the, uh, the corkscrew and its assist in there, but it is a longer slot, so it's got six. An interesting solution that hasn't really been applied to uh, larger size multi-tools, which is kind of strange because when you apply this to a shorter tool, you get a fairly thick multi-tool and you notice it more because the overall length is less. I think if this six slot solution was applied to a much longer tool, you'd actually notice the increase in thickness a lot less. It's a very interesting solution, but until some major manufacturer actually applies it to a four inch or four and a half inch uh, tool, you know, which would be full size and XL, we'd really have to see how they execute it before I could truly say whether I, I like it or not. The fact that all of these solutions to the same design problem coexist in the multi-tool market is evidence that there is no public consensus. If we all agreed on the best solution, then all manufacturers would use that same design. However, the public does favor some solutions more than others. Judging by the wild popularity of the Leatherman Surge, I would say that the general public is pretty favorable to the tool exchanger option that this employs. People seem to just not mind that much having to carry the extra piece and having to take a little extra time to change it in and out when needed. Another of the most popular solutions with the general public is just leaving off one of the five tools. We see that in the Super Tool 300, and this is a Sheffield, it's a budget multi-tool, and this also leaves off the scissors for much the same reason that the Super Tool does. And if you're gonna leave off one of the five tools, the most popular things to leave off would be the secondary blade, uh, the scissors, if you're trying to make a less expensive, less complex tool, or the metal file, if you're trying to make more of an outdoorsy tool rather than a machine shop tool, you might not need a metal file. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion, and I'm sure many of you have your own favorite solution. Maybe you have something new that's never been tried that's going to end this debate once and for all. That would be pretty cool. Please share your ideas in the comments section. And this has been We All Juggle Knives. Stay tuned for many more videos on blades, on flashlights, on multi-tools, prepper gear, and so forth. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm out.